Blessed morning to everyone and welcome to Baptist Bible Church. Today we are going to celebrate our fathers, our God-given fathers. And we're also going to give praise to our God who is our Father. So let us all stand as we begin our morning worship service. Let us sing a song, My Heavenly Father Watches Over Me. We'll sing the first and the second verses and go to the chorus. On the first verse, ready? Say, I trust in God wherever I may be. We'll be seated as we listen to our choir.
Let us all stand as we continue our worship to our God. Let us sing the song, I Belong to the King. All together on the first verse, ready, say. I belong to the King, I'm a child of
you are you all children of the king amen that is only possible through jesus christ so let us sing the third verse as the choir comes down i belong to the king and his promise is sure that we all shall be gathered at last in his kingdom above where thy father so pure when this life Thank you for that wonderful singing. A pleasant good morning to all and welcome to Baptist Bible Church. Praise the Lord for this opportunity that we could gather together and worship His precious name. Okay, and for those of you who are watching us online, thank you very much. Just drop a comment so that we can know that you're there. And you can also share this live uh, service to your friends, and especially to those fathers because today is Father's Day. You know, later we'll be recognizing all our fathers that are present with us today. And we have a special speaker today that will... Uh, surely be a blessing to us and then uh, we'll have a special gift for all the fathers so you mga fathers po well this is your day okay uh, just a few reminders don't forget uh, next month will be children's day we start our uh, uh, morning service it's eight, at, at eight o'clock for the children's de uh, department they have their uh, sunday school class at eight um, then followed by the zoom meeting at eight thirty. If you would like to uh, be a part of the children's ministry, you can contact Sister Grace and Brother William. They're in charge with the ministry. Or you are interested to join other ministries like the music ministry, you can contact Sister Joy, Sister Kim, Brother uh, Irvin here. They're in charge with the music ministry. Or you can join the choir, you can go and uh, ask Brother Brian. So you see our cry, our, we can now see our cry singing. So we praise the Lord for that. Okay, also, at 9 o'clock, we start our service at 9. Uh, we have our Sunday, combined Sunday school. We are studying the book of Acts. So be, please be here at 9 o'clock, and then we will be studying the book of Acts. Okay, and also don't forget our, our Bible studies, the ladies' uh, Bible study every Friday at 8, and then the men's Bible study every other Thursday and every Saturday, three, uh, 9, three in the, three, uh, 9 in the morning, uh, 3 in the afternoon, and 8 at 8 p.m. in the evening, handled by Brother uh, Al J. Tabula. Okay, so you may have received the, the link, so you can join our uh, Bible studies. Okay, so this is one way of us growing in our faith. Okay, don't, don't forget to pray for our dear pastor. He's continuing his therapy, so let's continue to pray for him. Continue to pray for Pastor Mike uh, Tanyala for his uh, medical treatment and also for Pastor do include Pastor Carlos Moral also for his medical needs. Okay, so uh, yung mga ating mga uh, sinosuportahan po ng mga pastor at mga missionaries, please do include them in our prayers. Sundan niyo po sila sa Facebook, pray niyo po sila so you can know what is going on in their ministry, what the Lord has, is doing in other countries. Okay, and also don't forget uh, our regular tithes and offerings. Uh, we praise the Lord that we were able to purchase a new uh, amplifier. So, magiging maganda po yung ating uh, sound system so that our online service will be good. So, we praise the Lord for providing for our needs. So, thank you for giving uh, to the Lord. And this one way of uh, reaching out to others to improve our online services. Okay? Um, and also, don't forget our faith promise goal of giving of uh, 70000 Per week, we are now on week 29. Okay, so we praise the Lord for that. So let's continue to be faithful in giving to the Lord. And as the Lord said, I will never leave you, nor forsake you, and I will provide and open the windows of heaven. And I know that some of you can attest that uh, giving faithfully to the Lord, the Lord will always bless you. Okay, so today is Father's Day. So we would like to request 
all the fathers that are present with us today to please stand. If you're a father, please do stand up. Kahit na on the way pa lang. Ayan. Let's give them, give them a big hand. Okay. So, we praise the Lord po yan. Tingnan niyo po mga kamay niyan. At talaga po naman, makakapal na. Ayan. Dahil po hardworking po ang ating mga fathers. Okay. So, we have a special gift for all the fathers. And also for those of you who are fathers who are watching us online. You know, we would like also to recognize you. Papadala na din po namin yung inyong mga special gifts po sa inyo. Ha? Okay, through online then. Okay? So, please do remain standing, all the fathers. All the fathers, uh, after giving, yan, yung mga receive nyo. Yan, please do uh, remain standing. Okay. So, yan po. Uh, kailangan natin. I would like, at this time, I would like to request our guest speaker to please come and uh, pray for our fathers. Pastor Dalusio. Shall we pray? Join with me, fathers and members, as we pray for our fathers this morning. Heavenly Father, we praise you and thank you, Lord, for this wonderful opportunity that I could pray for our fathers, especially in this church. Thank you for giving them, Lord, to this church. Thank you for their faithfulness. Thank you, Lord, in spite of this pandemic, Lord, they were able to come and celebrate the Father's Day, O oh God, this today. I pray that you will continue to work in their lives, especially you will always give them, Lord, your word that will encourage them to go on in spite of the difficulties that we, they are facing. I don't know what they are going through right now, but I pray, O oh God, that you will meet the desires of their heart this morning, O oh God. I pray that you will also encourage them to be more faithful to increase their faith and bring their family to you, Lord. Especially in this time of pandemic, Lord, we need men like them who will stand up and to be strong in you, Lord, as they have been this, mor this morning, be strong in the Lord. Help them to be strong in you, Lord, strong in the word of God, strong in their faith. So that they can be able, Lord, to overcome any obstacles or problems or difficulties that they are facing. Lord, it's a wonderful day, Lord, to celebrate with them. I pray that this morning, Lord, you will grant the desires of their hearts, O God. I commit them into your hands. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. So thank you very much. Let's give them a warm applause again. Give them a big hand. Thank you very much. You may now be seated. At this time now, we will be recognizing our visitors. If you're here for the very first time, we are so glad that you were able to be with us. If you're, this is your first time to be at Baptist Bible Church. I met one. Brother Dubani, can you please stand? Yan, okay. He's in the front. Uh, he's from uh, Cebu. Uh, mother church niya po yung uh, Katipunan pa under Pastor Kent Jesalva. Thank you very much. And again, a returning uh, visitor, ha? Uh, Yung mga nag apply po sila pag nandito sila sa Manila, ito po ang kinukonsider na lang church. And we praise the, uh, the Lord for that. Brother uh, Jay, can you please stand? Yan po. Yan. He's from Davao. He's from Davao. And he's here uh, applying for a job for a seaman, uh, processing his paper. So we praise the Lord that he, will, he can be with us today to worship the Lord. Okay. So meron pa po ba? Did I miss anyone? Okay, so it's nice to see you. Are you happy to be in the Lord's house? Amen. Let's all please stand up and let's sing our welcome song. Let's sing our welcome song as we wave to each other. Wala po muna ang kamayan. And let's maintain our physical distancing. But let us welcome everyone, and especially the fathers. Let us greet them. A happy Father's Day. There's a welcome here. A welcome here, there's a Christian welcome here, hallelujah, there's a welcome here, a welcome here, there's a Christian welcome here, Igaya ng buhay, kung kilala mo si Cristo, Igaya ng buhay. 
It was just a few weeks back, about a month ago, when we had our speaker speak for us on our Mother's Day. So our speaker is no longer a stranger to us. Uh, actually, uh, he has graduated from Asia Baptist Bible College, and he is also serving in Asia Baptist Bible College as a faculty member, and he's teaching, I think, part of the subject that he's teaching is uh, Christology and associated with also some um, theological subject. And our speaker, as you know, has, or is pastoring right now 
in Bible Baptist Church in Marilao, Bulacan. So it's a great honor to introduce to you our speaker, none other than Pastor Carlos Darlusio, and he is accompanied by his wife, Sister Irene. Sister Irene, would you please stand up? Sister Irene. So, Pastor Darlusio, it's your service. Amen. Uh, Brother Edith, could you could we adjust this microphone? Nanilibago po ako kasi maliit. Tataas ko lang po ng konti. So much. Ayan. Iba na po talaga pag matangkad. Eh. It's a wonderful day with you in worshiping the Lord. Amen? It's a wonderful song and wonderful song. Lead me, Lord. I'll follow. I hope that would be true to all of us. That no matter what, we're going to really follow the Lord. Because that is the only right thing to do. To obey the Lord, to follow what would be whatever the circumstances in our lives today. So and I, I'm glad to see Brother Ramon. I, I it's been a long time that I'm not seeing you and your family. And all the deacons, good morning to everyone. Uh, I was surprised that Pastor Boyd called me up again and to speak to Father's Day. Are you really sure, sir? Because I've been with you last Mother's Day. He said, complete the task and obey, sir. Because you said so, so I will just say, yes, sir. <laughs> you know, Pastor Boyd has been a blessing to us, especially to my wife when we got married. And we thank the Lord for using him, the Bible College, and even Santa Mesa. Uh, we will be forever grateful uh, to this church, uh, to Pastor Void, and to ABBC College. And I thank the Lord. Without the ABBC, I don't know where we are, where we are now. And we thank the Lord because as a grandmother church, you prayed for us, you helped us along the way since we were starting the work. And now we've been in Marilao, Bulacan for, I think, 26 years. 26 years. We were organized uh, 23 years ago. So uh, it will be a long road. It will, we need to stay no matter what. Amen? So happy Father's Day to all of you. Remember, don't forget, it's your day. Because the rest of the, the day of this year is Mother's Day. Okay? <laughs> Ito lang yung araw natin, mga tatay. All of the days are for mothers. Amen? <laughs> I'm just joking. So, welcome to our worship service this morning. And if you're ready, say it aloud, amen? amen. Yo, you're ready, you're awake. And by the way, before I forget this, I just want to thank personally... <laughs> Brother Carlos Mastrilli for helping us, especially when we were having problem or difficulty when it comes to our electricity. So uh, he helped me a lot how to have an expensive post for us to have electric electricity in our church so that we could have an unconditioned facility. So it's very expensive. At that time, because we bought already the proper the post for, I think that is six posts just to have for us to have an electricity going to the church. So, Brother Carlos Mastrilli, uh, thank you so much for your help. And this morning, if you're ready, please open your Bibles with me in the book of Titus. In the book of Titus, please. Titus chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. Verse 1 and verse 2, please read with me as I read verses 1 and 2. Ready? Go. But speak thou the things which become sound doctrine, that the aged man... Be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith, in charity, in patience. So I'd like to speak to you on the subject, characteristics of a sound father. 
or a healthy father. What are those characteristics that we need to see as a father? Okay? So when we say sound, it means healthy, whole. And under that, I put a very specific subject, aged but not aching. Aged but not aching. When we say aging, that is unavoidable, uh, inevitable in our lives as we stay here in, on, in our lives, we, we need to face aging process. I remember most of our young people when we became leaders in Kalookan, uh, we were just youth leaders there and most, mostly of our uh, youth leaders now are all pastors in Kalookan. And I'm the one, the eldest one. That's why we are trying to stay together, stick together as one in Kalookan because our church has been a blessing to us. Now, before that's Pastor Aranda, now is Pastor Jericho Samson who's pastoring Kalookan. And we thank the Lord because uh, as an elder among the missionaries, we're able to stay together as a missionaries. And that's what we need in our times. Because some the, the difficulty nowadays, people or some, some missionaries will just adapt or go to some churches just to have support and not to love the church and not to love where the, the pastor that they were came from. So, this morning, aging but not aching. When I say aching but not aching, it doesn't mean you are exempted from physical pain or emotional pain. What I'm talking about when I say aching, it means to avoid distress, to avoid depression, to, avo uh, to avoid anything that will make your life painful in this life like anxiety and regrets in life. Because I have seen a lot of adults, especially men, they were aging but aching. They were still in pain right now. They were still living in pain. They were still living in their past. I hope you are not that kind of father or aged man, aging but aching. But rather, I have seen a lot of Faithful men in the church, especially, they were aging, but not aching. So here in the book of Titus, let me give you just a little background regarding this book. It's a very short book, one of the pastor's epistles. So Paul wrote this probably after his first imprisonment in Rome. He wrote this to Titus. And first, I'd like to give to you, as a sort of introduction, Titus was a personal son in the faith of Paul. Titus was a personal son in the faith of Paul. So, I mean, Titus was one of the representatives, the messengers of Apostle Paul to the churches. He worked with Apostle Paul. As you look at Titus chapter 1, verse 4, please go with me. In the scriptures, the Bible says to Titus, my own son after the common faith. You see that? He is not a father physically to Titus, but rather spiritually. He claimed that Titus was his own son in the faith. So Paul, as an aged person, as a pastor, he appreciated and he acknowledged Titus as his son in the faith. You know, my joy as a pastor, as a senior pastor, we, I, we have at least five missionaries right now in our church. And we are close together as a missionaries. As, as their senior pastor, I'm, I'm so privileged, I'm so honored to have this missionaries with me along the way in our ministries. As somebody says, a son may forget 
his father, but a father will never forget his son. Uh, what I mean, it's a joy to a pastor. It's a joy for pastor boy to see son in the faith in this place, son in the faith in this church. Like Paul to Titus. And as a pastor also, it's my joy to see my son in the faith. Like Titus, faithfully serving the Lord with his pastor. Very rare you can see that now in many churches. But here, as an example, you will see Apostle Paul claiming and acknowledging the presence of his son in the faith, Titus. So, my question is, as a father, spiritually, do you have a son in the faith also? Since you got saved, maybe you won your son in the Lord. That is your, not only son physically, but also son in the faith. And that is the most, that, that is the greatest thing that you could have a children whom you brought to the Lord. Amen? So, Number two, not only Titus was a personal son in the faith, but, but also, and I like this one, Titus was a, was a problem solver of Paul. Problem solver of Paul. He was always a solution partner, not a part of the problem. You know why? We need that kind of son in the faith in the church right now. Who will help the pastor and who will help the church to solve the problem and to settle the problem and help this church to grow. So you see, you will see here in Titus chapter 1 verse 5, it says there, For this cause left I thee in Crete, that thou shouldest set in order in the things that are wanting and ordain elders in every city as I had appointed thee. So you see, Titus was not only a personal son in the faith of Apostle Paul, but also he is a problem solver. He is not the problem of the church. It's okay to overtook the work, but not to overtake the work. Are you with me? My, my pastor, when he left to America, and he left that ministry to Pastor Jericho Samson, and we thank the Lord, because Kaloakan was able to train and send many missionaries. And we praise God. And we are part of that kind of blessings. What I'm telling you, brethren in the Lord, we need son in the faith in this church. We need problem solver in this church. We have so many problems outside, but let us be a problem solver in the church. Not will add to the problem, but will solve the problem. So we, we are enjoying the ministry, but life in the church is not always like that. Struggles, problems, difficulties may come. Before I stood before you, my mother was rushed to the hospital and she is now in the in the ICU right now. It's broke my heart because she's, she's the one used by the Lord to, for me to know the Lord and be able to respond to the call of the Lord to the mission field. So my heart is broken. As I uh, dig this scripture aged but aching Paul was already old. He, was, he faced a lot of difficulties. And as he wrote this to his son in the faith, the most trusted and reliable, I think, evangelist, associate pastor, or assistant, you will see here that Apostle Paul gave all his trust to Titus. You see here in Titus chapter 1, verse 5, he said, he appointed Titus. For what reason? So that he can set in order the things that are wanting and ordain elders in every city. 
And you will see a lot of verses in the scriptures regarding how Titus became a problem solver in the life of Apostle Paul and in, even in many problems in churches. He's the one who solved the problem. I mean, he did not add problem, stress to Apostle Paul. He makes the ministry, the life of this great man of God enjoyable and lighter because of the life of Titus. And we need that kind of man, pastor, associate, ministers in the church so that the church will move forward and will grow us along the way. Let me give you verses regarding how important Titus was in the life of Apostle Paul. In the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 5, he said, when we, we, when we were come into Macedonia, Paul said, Our flesh had no rest, but we were troubled on every side. Without, imagine that, not in the church, without, outside the church, there were fightings. Within, there were fears. And in verse chapter 7, verse 6, he said, Nevertheless, God that comforted those that are cast down, comforted us. By what? By the coming of Titus. Imagine that you were in trouble in and out. And then Titus came and he said, there he comforted us by the coming of Titus. Look at verse 7, 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 7. And not by his coming only, but by the consolation wherewith he was comforted in you. When he told us, your earnest desire. So Titus is bringing good news to Apostle Paul regarding what's happening to the churches that he ministered upon. Look at this. Your morning your fervent mind toward me so that I rejoice the more. Pastor Boyd has already been here for how many long years? Like my mother, I told my brothers and sisters, do not give sadness or stress to my mother. Don't let, them die. Don't let her die in stress. Let her enjoy every moment of her life. And Pastor Boyd also, he's been with you for a long time. Wait for the perfect time that the Lord will send somebody to help him heal. He's already old. He, but when we talked to him, when we celebrated his birthday and we came to his place, he said, he wants to serve more and he wants to preach more in this pulpit. So I, we were praying that the Lord will continues to strengthen him and help him so that he can come and preach again to this pulpit. He loves you so much. His life is in the ministry. It gives comfort and refreshment when he, every time they will see you serving the Lord faithfully. So men, let me encourage you. Let's be a problem solver in this church. Amen? Not to add problem in this church. Verse 13, you will see in 2 Corinthians chapter 7. Please go with me there. It says there, Therefore we were comforted in your comfort, yea, and exceedingly the more joyed for the joy of Titus because his spirit was refreshed by you all. Imagine the presence. Imagine this person. How he helped the man of God ministering to other church because he cannot go anywhere. He cannot do everything. We pass or void need you he, here in this place. Amen. And in verse 14, for I have boasted anything to him of you. My, imagine that he's so proud to Titus. Could you say that my pastor is so proud of me because he's helping me, refreshing my soul, comforting me? So you see, we need men in this place. We need more father in this place. That will help the ministry here, especially Pastor Boy. I am not ashamed. But as we spoke all things to you in truth, even so our boasting which I made before Titus is found a truth. And let me give you again, encourage you again in verse chapter 8, verse 6. 
Please follow me in 2 Corinthians chapter 8. In so much that we desire, we desire Titus, that he has begun, that as he had begun, so he would also finish in you the same grace also. But thanks be to God which put the earnest, verse 16, care into the heart of Titus for you. Verse 23, whether in any, whether any do inquire of Titus, he is my partner, my fellow helper. Concerning you or our brethren, be inquired. They are the messengers of the churches and the glory of Christ. Amen. He's a partner. He's a fellow helper. He's a messenger of the churches for the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. You're not doing that just for the pastor. You're doing that for the Lord through your pastor. He's a personal son in the faith. He is also a problem solver. Are you with me? That's why. The Lord brought you here together. That's why I read some quotations and it says, never forget three types of people in your life. What are those? People who help you in difficult times. Do not forget them. Who's been with you, your wife, your husband. You've been together for how many years? Okay, even your friends or anybody here or pastor board or some uh, co-Christians here who help you in difficult times. Number two, never forget who left you in difficult times. Who abandoned you. Even Paul experienced that. Demons have forsaken me. Many people fought against me in the ministry. There is no perfect pastor. There is no perfect church. But our principle in the church, I am not a perfect pastor, you are not a perfect member, but we are growing and learning together. And thank you members for staying here and staying for my pastor here. Staying here no matter what. Amen? And last but not the least, never forget those who put you in difficult times. Never forget those people who put you in difficult times. So he... In, that's why in chapter 1, you will see Titus is dealing with false teachers. That's why Paul, Paul appointed Titus to, to set things in order. You know, when there is no pastor in a church, when there is no father in the home, when there is no president in the government, there will be chaos. That's why he said to Titus, set things in order because the church cannot be organized the church cannot grow without an organized system in the church amen set things in order even until now for 26 years we need to set things in order so that the church will be a better church a growing church and not only that ordained elders in every city so as you will look at those verses, you will see that there are many churches in that city. And Paul is so concerned so much to those churches, they don't have pastor, they don't have elders. And they, Titus should be the one to solve that problem, set things in order, and ordain elders in the church. So you see, why? Why they need to appoint elders? Why do they need to why he needs to set things in order? You will see in verse 10 in Titus chapter 1, it says there, For there are many unruly. You see that? Even in churches, there are many unruly. And even what? Vain talkers. Just talk. There's, but I mean. We don't need vain talkers in the church. What we need is who will help the ministry how to grow. You go out, you do the Bible study, you baptize, and we thank the Lord because even in my birthday, we, we baptize three people. We never stop for, two, for almost one and a half years. We've been doing Bible studies, saving people. Some, some were baptized in many places. We're able to use this online to spread the gospel we're not just being talkers 
We are not evil workers. So, I mean, we need this kind of person. We need this kind of partner. Really, Titus was a fellow helpers. One of that. Okay? Not only that, let's continue. Titus chapter 1. This is just an introduction to my subject to give you at least you know what I am talking about. Okay? Verse 11. Whose mouths must be stopped. Imagine, Titus came to the church and he said to the, to the churches, you must be stopped. You need to be a strong leader before you can stop them. You will face a lot of enemies for doing, for doing that, right? Whose mouth must be stopped? What else? Who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not. I mean, if your pastor, like Pastor, pastor Boyd, like Pastor Apostle Paul, if you're a, a Sunday school teacher, if you're a preacher, do not teach against to what he do, doesn't believe. Are you with me? Or else you will bring contradiction and confusion to the church. You will not be able to help the church. Okay? So, they must be stopped because they were teaching wrong doctrine. He said, things which they ought not. Teaching things which they ought not. For filthy lucre's sake. And so much for that. Number three, not only he was a personal son in the faith, he was a problem solver of Paul. Okay? How he is going to solve the problem. Paul gave a solution how he is going to solve the problem. He said in chapter 2, verse 1, But speak thou the things which become sound doctrine. Church, what is doctrine? It's the truth. Or the scriptures which God has given us in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. All is key. scripture is given by the inspiration of God. For it is what? Profitable for doctrine. You see that? Why the Lord gave us this doctrine. So we need to grow as a church, as a believer. While we are staying here, we need to grow in doctrine, in teaching. And doctrine is so important. And not just doctrine, sound doctrine. And it says there in verse 1 and verse 2, why He gave us this doctrine? So that it can be taught. So that someone can teach it but speak thou the things which become sound doctrine and why we need to teach it so that people can live in it if people if members in the church do, doesn't know the doctrine the sound doctrine how are they going to live with it that's why he said in chapter 2 verse 2 that the aged man be sober be great temperate sound in faith in charity and in patience so after being taught with that sound doctrine, why we need to live the truth? It says in verse 10, and so wonderful. It says there, not for loining, but chewing all good fidelity that they may adorn. You see that? That they may adorn the doctrine of God, our Savior in all things. So that their lives will be attractive and the people will be drawn to Christ for their good, for their good and for the glory of God. So the word adorn, it means to make more beautiful and attractive. I mean, can you, you ladies, you make yourself more attractive by how? By doing some magic. Right? You need to wear some beautiful dress. You need to comb your hair and you put some uh, magic face here. Okay? Your makeup, your lipstick, so that you, you will be more attractive. There's nothing wrong with that. So, Paul is saying we need to teach doctrine, sound doctrine, so that we can live by it and at the same time, so that we can be attractive for the glory of God and for the glory of His church. Why? 
because the Cretans are, don't have the good doctrine. They don't have the sound doctrine. That's why they were living completely different. But they, some of them are members of the church. But because they don't know that, that sound doctrine, they will not be bright before the Lord. Look what kind of characteristics the members of some churches in Cretans. Look at verse 12. You will see that. One of themselves, even a prophet of their own, said, the, Christ, the Christians, not Christians, huh? the Christians are always liars. Imagine that. They are always liars. Lagi silang sinungaling. All liars will go to hell, right? But they are always liars. One of the prophets of them told them, Christians are always liars. Not only that, evil beasts and slow bellies. I mean, when the Bible told you that you have a slow bellies, not only you have a, a, a big belly, but also you are, what, lazy. So imagine that you are liars, you are evil beasts, at the same time you are lazy. So imagine that Titus is facing people who are always liars. They are not an easy members to deal with. What I mean, you need, we need Titus in many churches today. So when you say sound doctrine, healthy doctrine, so that we can help pe the people of God to live godly in this present age. So number three, you will see Titus preaches and practices sound doctrine. He preaches sound doctrine and he lives as an example to that sound doctrine. And because of that, Paul mentioned different kind of people in the church of Crete. Who are those? There are four groups that he mentioned here. The older men, older women, younger men, and younger women. So the best way to resist wrong teaching is to give positive instruction in Christian doctrine and its moral application because this will produce spiritual growth and right behavior in all, all in all of these groups regardless of their age regardless of their social background so the instruction of Paul to Titus was so clear to speak sound doctrine to teach sound do doctrine first and the most important in the church is to speak or to teach this sound doctrine to whom? To the aged men. To the fathers in the church. Hindi po aksidenting nilagay ng Panginoon niya na sinabi ni Pablo na mga lalaki, na mga katandaan at mga matatanda ay turuan ng sound doctrine. And this is so important. To live a life glorifying to God, we need to be taught, we need to be trained by this sound doctrine all else. Problem will arise in our church if they don't have the right doctrine. That's why if you're going to marry a Christian, not just marry a Christian, marry a Christian, especially young men who knows their doctrine, a good and sound doctrine and faithful in the Lord and faithful in the church and faithful to their pastor. Do not just marry because he loves you. You know why? He must love the Lord first before you. Pagkay kinasal na kayo, he will love you more rather than the Lord. So that my wife, I love the Lord first before her. That's why this is so important. Paul told Titus, he speak to the aged men. That's why I am bringing to you aged men. Older men. Father here. During those times, maybe 
to be considered aged men, maybe 40 and above. Okay? I don't know what's your age, Father, right now. But let me tell you, this message is so important in my life and in, my, in you as a church. Especially you, Father. We need to have some doctrine. And you cannot do that without your pastor helping you. That's why, even right now, even if I'm pastor, I'm always asking Pastor Boyd, what can you tell about this? Why? Because he's already old in the ministry. Not only old in the ministry, he's already been in the ministry for how many long years? And I need right counsel. And that's what we need today. It doesn't mean you're a pastor already. You've been in the pastor, pastoring maybe, and you don't need your pastor anymore. No, it's not. The, the longer you stay in the ministry, the more you need this veteran pastor. Amen? Don't neglect them. Don't forsake them. So, he started to the aged men. Number one, let me give you those characteristics or the traits of an aged man so that we can be aging but not aching. Number one, father should be sound sober. Amen? We need to think clearly because if you cannot govern your right, your, your thinking right, how can you govern your family? How can you govern other people? Amen. If a pastor cannot think right, how can I help my members? How can I help my family? The Lord entrusted that two beautiful young children and they are now grown up right now. We never stop calling them, teaching them, training them. Son, Hebrews 13.4 Marriage is honorable, honorable, honorable in all. Amen. But without outside marriage, the Lord says, you will be under curse. You know, my son told, told us, we were just trying out. We were just under. And we told them, no, it's not. That is not right. America, the trial and error may be acceptable, but it is not in the scripture. You will be judged by God. So our young people, our young men should know this right sound doctrine. You will only marry a person whom the Lord gave to you. And you need, if you really love that woman, you need to treat her, what? honestly and purely before you get married be sure you were able to keep your purity before God that is sound living because you have sound doctrine if nobody will teach that if nobody will if the father will not teach that to the children what will happen to our generation so we need to think right that the aged men be sober not only that, number two, the father should not only be sound sober, but also the father should be sound serious with gravity. Verse two, it says there that the aged men be not in the grave. Okay, let me clarify that to you. Not in the grave, but sound grave with gravity. When we say grave, it means dignified and worthy of respect. As you get older, you become more dignified. When you were, you were young, you were just preach. You, it seems you're better than your pastor. No, it's not. You still listen to your older pastor and obey him. Okay? I've been in the ministry for how long? I have a lot of... Uh, Friends, they said, I know now how to preach. I will go out and do the mission work. They plop. They stop in the way. They are not in the ministry right now. Why? 
You need to listen to your senior pastor. Right? When we started the mission work, I never expected my mother just to help us and to support us. If they will help, it's okay. That's why for three years, we, we just spend, my wife has been working right during those times. We, we, we need to stay late Saturday until Sunday. Mission work is, is so difficult. After three years, our support was cut off. And when I became a pastor, I changed it. I never support because I pity on you. I supported you because we loved you. We love them. And my priority in our mission work first is our family in Kaloog and in our missionary before we help outside missionaries. Why? Because we love them. And even until now, my pastor is receiving support from us, from the church. Not because he asked for it, but because we love him. When he had a car, when he had a house, we help him as a missionaries. The collaboration of many missionaries. And I told them, let's help. Let's make our pastor better, look good, and have a better ministry. You know what I mean? And we're enjoying doing that to our pastor and to even to our missionaries. When Pastor James met the positive, de- the positive COVID, this oxygen level is only 30%. It's only a miracle he lived. Thank you for your prayers. What I did, I, I, I organized a chat group of many pastors and I said, let's help for this man of God. And lo and behold, many of the pastors help. You know why? This pastor is worthy to be supported and to be of help. Amen? Imagine, if you will have COVID today, you will have, you need at least one million peso for you to survive. If you don't have that kind of money, how can you live? He went to the private hospital for three days or four days. The bill is already 300,000. And the Lord gave them wisdom. They need to be transferred to PGH. And still they paid. At least he lived right now. Amen. He's alive. Amen. And we praise God for that. We need to be grave. We need to be dignified. As we get older, as we age, you will see you need to be more respectable. You need to be more dignified. You know why? You Because you have been taught and trained by sound doctrine. So how can the members live right if they don't have sound doctrine? If, if they don't listen to the pastor's preaching? They have been here preaching the word of God to you. That's why, you know, the word, the, the, the word of God is spoken. That is Rema. You know what I mean? This is a spoken word. Do not just listen to the word of God. Let the word of God speak to your heart. Because even though you hear the word of God, but if the word of God did that, that powerfully work in your heart, the word of God is useless. It's not because the word of God is useless. Because you never hear the word of God speaking to your heart. Do not go out in this place, never, never even the spirit of God. Use the word of God so that it can speak to you. Amen. Not only that, number three, sound sober, but also sound grave or sound serious with gravity. So much to speak about that. Number three, father should be sound, self control, or sensible. It means temperate. It means not given to excess in anything. That's why literally sober and temperate is almost the same, synonymous to each other. It means when you say sober, sober-minded or temperate, do not be, literally, do not be influenced with wine. Right? That's the meaning of it. 
spiritually speaking, do not be influenced by wrong doctrines, wrong living. That's what we need. Aged men must be sound serious. Aged men must just be sound self-control or sensible. The older man should be sensible. It means soundness of mind. Aristotle said, he described a man who was level-headed and desires the right thing in the right way at the right time. That is sensible. Doing the right thing, the right time, the right... Everything should be right. Most, you know what? Mga problema naman natin sa buhay, even the ministry, because of wrong decision and wrong choices. Am I right? Hindi naman ho lahat ng problema natin sa buhay it's because we make the right decision. Kaya kailangan natin ng mga young, young men, as an aged man, as a father, when you need to teach your young men to be sensible. Amen? To be sound. You will see a lot of, of children doing the games. I still remember the son, the eldest son of Pastor James, he said, he was rushed to the hospital because at the age of 25, you know, the BP is 150 over 120. And I asked Pastor James, what happened? He's only 25. You know what his son is doing? That's the son of the pastor. Doing games. The whole night. And the mother said, You see? You're not listening to us. Nag-lock yung Diyo. Untik na ma-paralyze. Age 25. Fathers should not be passive with this. And even mothers. Do not let them eat the breakfast without eating the word of God first. You need to train to discipline them or else they will be swallowed by the world. We are going to raise young men who are not sensible. Who are not dignified. Number four, you will see here, father should be sound in faith. Notice the word sound in faith. Sa Tagalog po yan, ang dapat na matatandang lalaki magagaling sa pananampalataya. Hello, mga father. Hello, yang mga young men. When, when my wife said yes, I don't have anything to give to her because I'm a full-time worker. But one thing, he respect, she respected me. She saw in me, is my faith. That my God will help her and we will survive no matter what in the mission field. When we were started the mission work, late at night, 12 o'clock, we just eating the barbecue and then when we went home, we just sleep. We don't have car, we don't have place, we don't have property, we don't have building, we don't have anything. We give up everything. Tapagat ang pinag-uusapan natin sa gawain ng Diyos, it's all about faith. Look what's happening in the world. They have the money, they have money, they have a lot of things, but they cannot enjoy it and use it because they were stuck inside the house. What I'm telling you right now, aged men, father, let's be sound in faith. And you will see that in Hebrews chapter 11, please. Look at that. Hebrews chapter 11. If you please. What says in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 2? For by it, what? The elders... Obtain a good report. There were two kinds of faith. The teaching faith and the testing faith. Even though you know the scripture, you memorize the scripture, you preach the scriptures, you, you meditate the scriptures, it does not stop there. Because Abraham was tested to his faith. A faith that is not tested cannot be trusted. 
And you will see in Hebrews chapter 11, these elders, by faith, they were able to overcome testings. But listen, and even as he's telling us in verse 6, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that believe him. But not all those who believe in God, they were able to receive those promises. Look at verse 36. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 36. And others had trial of cru cruel mocking, mockings and scourgings, yea, moreover of bonds and imprisonment. Look at this. Verse 37. They were stoned. They were so asunder. Brimo, nilagari ka. Because of your faith. Now, sa panahon natin ngayon, it's easy to, to claim and to say, I have faith. But listen to me. If that is a true faith that you are claiming for, that faith will be tested. You know why? Because if it is tested, you will be blessed by God by it. Without testing, there will be no triumph and there will be no blessing. The Lord will not entrust you more. Amen? They were tempted, slain with a the sword. They wandered about in the sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, and tormented. You know what I mean? They were in the desert. They didn't have their proper clothes like us. They wandering in the desert. They don't know what will happen to them. Look at verse 39. And these all having obtained a good report through faith. What? Receive not the promise. You remember when there were problems in the book of Acts chapter 6? The widows have been arguing and fighting to each other because they have been neglected. And Peter said, with wisdom, an aged man spoke to them and they said, it's not proper that we are going to live the word of God and prayer. Choose an aged man. I will not put a ministry or a church if I die, if I go, if the Lord will call me someday in many, in other places, I will not live to a young, young preacher. I will make sure the one who will stand behind this pulpit is the one whom you have trained and trusted. Your father, your son in the faith. You're a problem solver. Not only that, practices and preaches the sound, the sound faith or the sound truth. You know what I mean? And one of the qualifications is what? Stephen, full of faith. We need aged men who are sound in the faith. I don't care if you're a pastor, a missionary, or a deacon, or a leader, or a Sunday school teacher. What God is looking for, for us as an aged man is having a sound faith. Look what happened in the book of Acts chapter 7. When, when, when Stephen spoke, in Acts chapter 6, verse 8, and Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. If you have full of faith, they will be full of power. And they will be full of the Spirit. And that's what we need to the aged men. And even in my life, what I need is God's faith and God's power in my life so that I can transfer that to our ministry. That is what is, is lacking in many churches today. They're doing the ministry. They're preaching. They're doing any kind of services. But it's useless because it's powerless in the pulpit and even in the altar. You cannot see men and aged men surrendering their lives for the ministry. Do you have sound faith, Father, aged man? Will you ask the Lord, Lord, give me sound faith? In these troubling, difficult times, we need sound faith. We need aged men. Number five, you see that the adjective, adjective was brought into three nouns. You will see this sound in faith, sound in charity, sound in patience. All of these three are so important 
in the ministry and in your life. This is the triad of Apostle Paul. Faith, love, and hope. Amen. If you say you have a sound faith, and if you don't have sound charity, it will be useless. It means the word agape, to leave focus on others. That is the great commandment. To love God, first of all. To love God with all your heart, with all your soul. Matthew chapter 22, verse 37. Up to 39. With all your soul and with all your mind. Oh, we are now in this age that people love themselves rather than loving the Lord and loving the souls of men. You know, my greatest joy in the ministry is not the building. It's not those people who got saved under the ministry. One time, I knocked on doors. I gave drugs. And the couple allowed me in their house share the word of God. We prayed together. They accepted the Lord. And then, lo and behold, that Sunday, they came to church. They were leaders in a Catholic church. You see that? We need aged men who will love souls more than their souls. We need more souls to be saved. We need more souls to be baptized in the baptistry. It's good. You are doing Bible science. It's good. You are winning souls. What we need is the result in our ministry today. And we cannot do that without sound faith and sound in charity. And last but not the least, sound steadfastly. It means perseverance, patience, steadfastness, endurance. That the aged men in patience, sounds in patience. As we get older, no, we're laughing when we are talking to our missionaries in Kalogan because we've been in our young people. We, we have never been a problem to our pastor. We were never there just to fight against our pastor. We helped him. We helped him in his ministry. And we're enjoying to each other. Imagine that. During those times, 25 years old, mga leader kami ng mga young people. And now they are now pastoring in Paranaque, San Ildefonso, Bulacan, in Cavite, in many places. How old am I now? 53. Pastor, you don't look 53. You look 63. But we're enjoying our ministry right now. Why? You know why? We need to endure. We need to persevere. Even with support, even without support, even problems will arise, even people will abandon you. Just go on. Just stay. Like Pastor Boyd. He's been in the ministry. If there's a reason for him to quit, it's him. You know why? He's been in the ministry. He has a lot of trials. Amen? And even when he's old, when he was put into court, and you are facing a lot of problems here, Thank you for staying for Pastor Boy. Thank you for fighting for your church. What I mean? He endured a lot of trials. He endured a lot of tears. He endured a lot of pain. Even until now. And he, Pastor Boy, has no reason to quit and to stop. He persevered. He endured. And he's now even steadfastly serving the Lord. Who am I to stop? Who are you to stop? Who are you to quit? I have no reason to quit. You know why? Aged. Tumanda tayo. Pero wag pa puno ng mga distress at mga stress at mga disappoint and mga despair sa buhay. Amen? Mga father, father, please be sound today. Be healthy today. Do you want to be healthy? Do you want to be sound? Then obey Titus chapter 2, verse 2. Read it, please. That the aged men be what? Sober, grave, temperate, sound in charity, sound in faith, sound in charity, and sound in patience.
vision. I'm telling you, every time I'm looking to Pastor Boyd, I will say, he persevered a lot. He endured a lot. And if he stays and he never quit, even until now, I'm encouraging you, look at him, an aged man, an aged pastor, a very dignified man, a very honorable man, sound in faith, sound in charity. I've been telling you, Pastor Boyd is so a humble person, a very dignified person. Love him. Pray for him. Let's be a faithful man in this church. Let's win more souls. Let's be a problem solver. Let us raise our faith and do great work for the ministry. Amen? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father in heaven, thank you so much for allowing us, Lord, to hear your word. Let it be your rema, the spoken word to us, not just to hear it. Let the word of God speak powerfully so that there will be change in our hearts inside so that we can do greater work, impossible things, and be able, Lord, to help this church, Lord, to grow more, to win more souls, to be baptized more, to disciple more, to support more missionaries. I pray for our Father today as an aged man, and I one of them, and even Pastor Boyd, even us, Lord, we need to be a godly and good example to our young men through the aged men who have been taught and trained with a sound doctrine so that we can live right and live beautifully and be attractive in this world because they will see the sound doctrine and the sound living. I don't know what you are going through, fathers and aged men. Let me speak to you from the heart. Will you pray with me that the instruction of Paul to Titus, that the aged men, will you pray for it? Will you live by it? And will you practice what we have heard today? To our young men, please listen to the pastor, listen to your parents, and to us ladies and young men, young women, Will you pray for your father? Will you pray for your children? Will you pray? If you're single, pray for the right person, for God's will in your life. Right now, right here, I don't know how the Lord spoke to your heart. I pray that this message will leave an impact to you and will say, Lord, help me to be a man that you want me to be. Help me to be a person that you want me to be. Help me, Lord, to follow you one day at a time. Will that song be true to you? In the Lord I will trust. I enjoy the singing. I enjoy everything that I heard to those songs. Let it be true. And much more, let the word of God powerfully change our lives for the better. Will you pray for that? Do not just listen to the word of God. There must be something today that the Lord has spoken and taught you. Pray for it and let the Holy Spirit empower you because the message is not yet over because you are just going to apply it. Blessed are those who hear it and who do it. Let us not just be hearers of the word. Help us to be doers of the word. If the Lord has spoken to your heart today, will you pray with me? If you can come to the altar, please come. I don't know how the Lord spoke to you. Let the word of God speak to you today. Will you? Sige Let's leave this place that our hearts have been thrilled because the Lord has spoken to you. Manalangin po tayo. Sir Dennis, the invitation now is open. If the Lord has spoken to you in any part of the sermon, whether it be of need of salvation, I invite you to come. 
so that others may come and share with you the gospel. And if you are listening online, please remember that it's only through Jesus Christ, the Son of God, God in the flesh, who lived a perfect life and has suffered a sacrificial death and was resurrected victoriously from the grave. Who is your only hope? Is there anyone who would say, Brother Dennis, Pastor Carlos, I am a sinner and I need to realize that Jesus Christ is my only hope as the one who died on the cross for my sins. And for you fathers, if the message has challenged your heart, will you respond by learning sound doctrine and living it out into sound living. Would you come? Or you may not be a father and the message has spoken to you, whether it be a need of following the Lord in baptism and you are already a Christian, would you do that? Heavenly Father, we thank you for the message that was preached, and we ask you, O oh Lord, that you would challenge us, that we would uh, that we would live out the truths that we have learned. And thank you for this church that has preached sound doctrine. And Lord, we pray that you would empower us to live it uh, out in our lives. And O oh Lord, I pray that you would uh, bless us in the things that you want us to do. Empower us, O oh God. And in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Okay, as we as we continue with our services, uh, I would like to take this opportunity to for to give our show our appreciation to Pastor Carlos. I, okay, before we do that, let's have the offering first. Okay, so uh, shall we all stand up as we have this offering? Uh, may I call now uh, Brother Jay to please come and uh, have the offering. Sige po, balalakin po tayo. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you once again for giving us the opportunity to serve you not only in singing, not only in preaching of the word of God, but also in giving. Lord, please bless this offering and use this, Lord, for the particulars of your work and also bless those hands where we'll, who will give this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. At this time, may we, may we request uh, Mom Irene to please come to the platform, as we would like, as we as a church would like to see our appreciation uh, for Pastor and Mom Irene. Okay, so church, are you blessed with the message? Uh, fathers, are you challenged? To, are you challenged with the message? So, thank you for visiting our church. And I know that this will go to her. So, <laughs> okay, so thank you very much for, for gracing our church with your presence. Okay, at this time, may I call on Brother Carlos to dismiss us in prayer? Brother Carlos, I'm sorry, Brother Carlos, <laughs> Brother Carlos. 
Somehow I, I feel that my mistake was slip of the tongue, which is prophetic. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, let, let, us, uh, let us all stand and be dismissed in a word of prayer. Um, Heavenly Father, we thank you Lord so much for uh, today, uh, for the message that you have uh, given us, Lord, to Pastor Carlos. And uh, we uh, thank you, Lord, for all the fathers that are here, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the message, Lord. And we pray, Lord, for all the men that uh, we would be uh, uh, selfless and not worldly. And uh, that uh, we would be uh, of sound doctrine, Lord, that we may be able to uh, lead uh, our families and also the world, Lord, that uh, your uh, word would be spread abroad here and abroad that more souls should be saved and be guided by your sound doctrine and your word and use us mightily lord in this uh, uh in the way that you have you have planned for this world and uh, God, and protect us lord as we go on our separate ways and bring us back uh, here again lord this afternoon to continue our worship day to you lord and all of these things we ask and pray in the mighty name and sweet name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I would like to call all the fathers to please come forward. We're going to have our picture taken with our guest speaker. All the fathers, pwede po tayo pumunta rito sa harapan and we'll get our pictures with our guest speaker. Thank you.